Good morning, average flatlanders. Today I'm going to talk about people losing their gear, getting lost, and getting rescued. This was just something I had to shoot a video on. A couple days ago I was sitting in a cabin on the north shore of Lake Superior listening to the water crash on the rocks below me. Evening, cup of tea, and I'm reading a book. This was a book about real life stories of people who had gotten lost in the north woods and actually about 50 miles from where I was sitting comfy in my cabin I was reading a story of about over a decade ago about a guy who went out to do a 26 mile backpack loop in the Superior National Forest and disappeared for about seven days. Essentially got rescued and it's an interesting story and while I was reading the story I was scrolling my phone of course at the end and what do you know I ran across a story from Colorado from basically a few weeks ago and it was basically the same thing that happened to both of them even though these stories were separated by over a decade and a thousand miles apart one in colorado one almost in canada 50 miles where i was from sitting and yet here i was reading the same story on a news article that basically happened to this guy over a decade ago and it just got me thinking so today we're going to talk about losing your gear when you're in the wilderness. People get lost all the time in the woods and wilderness. I mean, we could talk about that forever. It just happens and it will always happen. But the strange thing about these two stories, even though they're a decade apart, decade apart and over a thousand miles apart, is that the same thing happened to both people. Two people hiking in Colorado. They were in the maroon, maroon snowmass wilderness doing the four pass loop and they got separated from their gear somehow and it was nighttime cold and they had wet obviously and they had to be rescued the book i was reading was from 2001 when someone went rather inexperienced but they went on a 26 mile backpack loop in the spirit national forest and they got off on a wrong turn on a log road and what happened was they got lost set up their tent gear stuff like that and what happens they actually wandered away from their stuff so set up their tent backpack everything everything they had and they were just like oh i'm just gonna like wander through the woods and just like go over this hill and see what i see and they never came back and never found their stuff and uh, many days later they were finally discovered on the verge of death sleeping in a tree and rescued i think it's just crazy that you could have these two so similar stories one from 2001 boundary waters northern minnesota the other one's all the way in colorado snowmass wilderness happened just a few weeks ago and there's lessons in those stories because this stuff keeps happening obviously and somehow people lose their gear in the backwoods or they wander away which of course will put you in an incredibly bad position immediately i know all sorts of things can happen in the wilderness i've spent time in both places i've spent time backpacking through the mountains and i've spent time in the north woods where you can't see past your nose and it's just incredible that people would lose their gear completely. I mean, it's easy to be an armchair adventurer, but since I've spent my fair time in the wilderness of the West and going up to the mountains and all the way out in the North Woods, I think I might have a little bit of something to say on the subject. Now we could just say never leave your gear and that seems pretty obvious, but why does it still happen? Now if I think back to all the trips I've been on over the last few decades, whether it's in the mountains of Wyoming or up in the Boundary Waters, it's just I can think about times where I've done similar things and probably could have ended up in the same situation. I'm assuming it's always innocent these decisions people make to get away from their backpacks or stuff. But, you know, backpacks are heavy, they're full of gear, you set them down, you might set up camp, I've done this, and then, you know, you want to hike over the next rise, you want to hike up, see a lake, or, you know, just go explore a little bit. And how often do I actually have anything on my person? Usually your guard's down, right? You've got to your destination, you've set up camp, and, you know, you're just kind of, you've let your guards down, you're not really thinking about it. And this is potentially a bad idea, in both these cases it led to catastrophic results. That's basically how things go wrong. You know, people make a wrong turn, a storm comes in, you get turned around, and all of a sudden you literally have nothing on you but the clothes on your back. That's what happened to both these people a decade apart, a thousand miles apart. Both of them ended up with no shelter, no gear, no fire starter, no nothing. Literally all they had were the clothes that they were wearing. That just gives me pause when I go out on my adventures. I just think about, you know, what can I do to prevent such a thing? I don't know if you can always say I'll never leave my gear. Of course, we all set up camp. We might, like I said, go hike up to the top of a mountain. We might go see a lake, go fishing, go for a hike in the woods. That's what we do. The question is, what do I have on my person now that I've left all my stuff in the wilderness at my camp spot? Do I have extra fire starter on me? Do I have a little pack that has a, you know, 
what survival blanket, you know, fire starter, just a couple things, maybe a granola bar, who knows. Usually I don't do that, but reading these two stories definitely makes me think about that. I'm just curious, have you guys ever lost your gear? Have you wandered away from gear? When do you leave your gear? Do you take something with you? What do you think about these two stories? Go check them out. I'll leave links to them in the notes.